Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Today on the show, we have the CEO of Cognitivity Neurosciences, Sina Habibi. He's joining us today to talk about the advancements in Alzheimer's drugs, treatments, and screening processes. He's also going to share some of Cognitivity's recent collaborations and agreements, as well as some of the exciting things to watch for with Cognitivity near term. Hey, Sina, welcome back to The Dive. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, Cassandra. It's, it's lovely to be with you. Okay, so Sina, a panel of independent advisors to the FDA unanimously endorsed the Alzheimer's drug Lakembi, made by Biogen. How do you view the potential of Lakembi to fight the disease? This is a huge and exciting development. I don't know if you remember, it was a year and a half ago almost uh, when Biogen got uh, the, the, the first drug, aducanumab, approved by the FDA. But shortly after, after that, the outcome advisory committee uh, rejected that, that approval and it followed on with subsequent um, resignation and that slowed down the uptake of uh, aducanumab and uh, put a huge cloud and, and uh, question mark around whether we're going to have better amyloid treatments coming to the market. This time around, it's a completely different story. Uh, we have uh, a full-on support from ADCOM, our advisory committee, in, in support of the deployment of the product. This is again reflected in the CMS announcement that they are going to cover the cost of the treatment. These are the issues that we had last time for the uptake of the treatment that seems to be rectified, and we can go ahead to taking the drugs by, for taking the drugs to the market and to the, to the people that desperately need it. So we're super excited about this. In your view, how close do you think we are to the Alzheimer's cure stage? Uh, cure, it's a, it's, it's a very uh, magical and, and great, work, a great word, but uh, we need to be careful what we mean. I think at this stage, for the first time, we have managed to slow down the progression of the disease if detected early and intervention happens early. Huge step forward. We can slow it down, but cure or full treatment, we still some 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 time away. But I'm I'm confident we will get there. Now, according to global data, the Alzheimer's disease market across eight major countries will reach fourteen billion dollars in twenty thirty. Do you think policymakers understand how big of a problem that this is growing into? I I think everyone is aware uh, how big the problem is. Uh, the global cost of dementia and Alzheimer's come close to a trillion dollar annually. So if we find a treatment that can address the, uh, or at least slow down the disease progression, uh, we can have a huge dent at that bigger cost. So I think policy uh, makers are, are excited about having a solution uh, that at least can manage the, the, the problem and in speed of its growth. Um, quite positively. So uh, this is, this is, I think, again, step forward, 13 billion versus a trillion dollar, still a great investment. Why do you think Alzheimer's is becoming so prevalent? Uh, aging. Uh, simply, uh, we have uh, a growing population and uh, we live longer. Uh, life expectancy has uh, uh, grown over the past decades, and this is an aging problem that is uh, is now growing because we have more people at older ages uh, that still have uh, the, the the physical health, but the brain health uh, goes away. Okay, now let's talk about Cognitivity. For our viewers new to the story, can you give us a quick overview of the company? Absolutely. So we have invented a brand new approach to assessing cognition or detecting cognitive impairment. All brain diseases uh, have a symptom shared in cognitive impairment. When the brain is foggy and you can't think straight and you lose your memory, uh, there is no effective way to look at cognition or detect impairments um, systematically at wide scale. And this was the the the... the hypothesis, this was the reason we started working on cognitivity almost 10 years ago, a decade ago, at the University of Cambridge, and then we further developed it at MIT. And we said there's got to be a better way to assess cognition other than asking memory questions. By the time memory is gone, 
the brain is heavily affected. We should look at something which is an earlier indicator. So we look at what is called speed of information processing by the brain. To put this in the most simplistic computer analogy, rather than focusing on hard drive of the brain, we focus on the CPU of the brain. How quickly you can process information, in particular visual information. Because at any given time, your eyes capturing information in form of visual information and analyze that. 80% of your brain computational capacity goes to vision. So vision is a great proxy for brain uh, computational capacity. So we put that hypothesis to test. Uh, we uh, patented the technology, then we went through multiple rounds of clinical trials from a small pivotal, a small proof of concept to a massive clinical trial that included uh, half of uh, London uh, NHS trusts. Uh, and we showed that technology works, and it worked really well. Uh, we've shown 96% precision in detecting impairment versus healthy. And we wrote an AI layer on top of this. I know AI is a super to hot topic right now, but we've been doing it for the last 10 years. We've, we've written, we've had publications in how AI needs to be regulated years before it's, uh, it's become a massive uh, topic. So uh, the technology is now being used for two major um, um, solutions. One is to screen at wide scale to find early stage uh, brain health problems, in particular Alzheimer's and send the patients for full-on diagnosis. When they receive the diagnosis, we can use the technology to effectively monitor them during the course of the treatment or disease progression. What sets Cognica apart from other technologies in its class? Uh, the completely different approach that we've taken, as I mentioned before, we're looking at how quickly you can process information, in particular visual. Most of the technologies out there, uh, they're looking at memory. and um, they have digitized some of the old memory tests um, or battery of tests. The key parts that our approach has given us is a speed. We can do this in three to five minutes. This is uh, pretty much uh, on parallel. Uh, the accuracy has gone up in early uh, diagnosis uh, and detection. It's gone up to 96%. Again, a huge uh, breakthrough um, and, and breaking the gap. Uh, the, 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 um, uh, boundaries of performance. Uh, also, because the test is visual, you don't have language, culture, and education biases. Uh, we've taken this technology, we developed it in, at, at Cambridge and uh, MIT. The technology is being now used in uh, the Middle East with Arab uh, population, by Arab population, in Japan by Japanese population, in Singapore by Chinese and Malay population, in the US by American uh, population. And we've done this in a, in a very short span of time because we don't have those biases that test that they're based on memory and uh, other approaches have. So the technology is fundamentally scalable and effective. Okay, so you did speak a bit about AI here. Um, what role do you think AI will play in personalized medicine and treatment plans? Uh, great question. So a uh, huge role. Um, and I'm not. I'm not saying that uh, AI is going to replace humans. Uh, that's. Uh, I don't. I don't see that happening in early future. But I think uh, people who don't use AI uh, will be uh, replaced by the ones that they use it. And this is because uh, we have vast amounts of data collected at any given time that can inform us in order to make a bit better decision. Whether it's in diagnosis, whether it's in treatment, whether it's in. Um, finding out what treatments work for what particular person. This real-time data needs to be analyzed. And this is where AI comes in and give the individual, whether it's a healthcare professional or the person themselves, the information that they need to make the right decisions. Um, and uh, for me, this is going to be a massive breakthrough. Now, you reported an opportunity from a recently approved Alzheimer's drug following Medicare's decision to provide coverage for fully approved FDA treatments. Can you tell us how cognitivity will be a part of this? Absolutely. So uh, I started by uh, the story about aducanumab, uh, the bi first biogen drug um, uh, tackling beta amyloid. Uh, and let me let me come back to that again. Uh, what happened was when this drug was approved and then we had issues around uh, advisory committee and uh, reimbursement, 
the only place in the world that take the, the, the treatment was actually administrated in real world setting, not in a clinical setting, was in the United Arab Emirates. And we had uh, an agreement there uh, with uh, a major provider to look at um, screening patients who come in for normal checkups within the age category, of course, and offer them the, uh, taking the test. This is for the screening purposes. And following a positive uh, detection, they would get a full-on diagnosis. So they, they screened hundreds of people, and they found around a, a handful of patients that they were at risk. When they got a spinal tap from them, when they got a, a further testing, they realized that they're starting to build beta amyloid plaques. This is the pathology that uh, we now hypothesize that results in Alzheimer's. Um, they went on a course of treatment and we monitored them the, over the course of the treatment. And we showed from the hand, uh, from the 10 patients, two of them significantly improved and uh, the rest did not decline over the course of six months. This is a huge breakthrough because um, CMS announced two weeks ago that they will cover the cost of the treatment, which again, where is close to around $20,000, we, we'll see what uh, the price point is going to be. Uh, only if the clinician provides evidence that the patients are getting better. And to our knowledge, the only real-world evidence that shows this outside clinical setting is the work that we've done and we published with, with, uh, in, in the UAE. Is there any ongoing research or development efforts to further enhance the capabilities of Cognica in targeting and delivering Alzheimer's drugs? Uh, in, in, the, in, in many different ways, we are involved with uh, different research institutions, with pharma, uh, with um, other technology companies. Yeah, we, we continue uh, the, uh, our R&D efforts, uh, but this is, uh, we, we've taken a new approach and this is, this is something interesting uh, because the technology is validated and can be used for all different use cases. Uh, we have different sorts of agreements that uh, it's closer to real world setting as opposed to clinical trial. Our hypothesis is that the technology is powerful in screening and day-to-day -day clinical practice. So we want to stay away from the lab and, 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 and trial, uh, but mostly in real world setting where um, uh, you, can, uh, you can see how the drugs are performing in, 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 in reality. So that's our approach and that's the strategy we've taken. Now, you announced your collaboration with the Alzheimer's Society in Oman. Could you walk us through the partnership? Why Oman? Uh, it was, there was an interest. Uh, so they want to um, look at uh, comorbidity between uh, diabetes and, and dementia. And, and we all know that there is there's relations there. But no one has actually properly studied this at length. And uh, they, uh, they re and this is actually a, a great opportunity to come back to what uh, I mentioned in the previous question. We are giving access uh, to our technology for all different types of studies, particularly in these ones, because it gives us a lot of data in training our AI model in the background so that we can uh, find the differentiator, the differentiator and classifiers for these different diseases that it's not on the, the high side, uh, it's not detectable. So uh, they reached out, they wanted to study uh, this particular comorbidity. Uh, we realized it's a really interesting area. Um, and again, coming back to what you mentioned earlier, uh, how we can treat and what is resulting in more uh, dementia cases in your previous question, this is one of them. Lifestyle, high calorie diet uh, has been shown to have impact on aging. So uh, this is an interesting study. Will give us a lot of data uh, to study this and train our AI models to be more uh, specific. Um, and the strategy that we've uh, effectively used in order to to, to expand our R and D efforts. You also entered into an agreement with MSA Life Insurance to provide Cognica to MSA's policyholders. What can you tell us about this? Super exciting development. We, um, this is a, again, to our knowledge, first of its kind deployment. Uh, the idea is to uh, screen uh, 1.5 million uh, policyholders that their age above 65. Uh, the reason for this is, as I again mentioned earlier, the drugs are coming to the market but they are working at early stage. But 
up until now, because we didn't have a treatment, no one wanted to know that they have a problem, particularly at early stage. They wanted to at least be happy. Uh, but now that the tr drugs are coming to the market, everyone's going around and scratching their head saying, okay, uh, who are we going to give these drugs to? We haven't characterized this population. We haven't diagnosed them. And Japan is ahead of others because, again, a uh, huge aging problem. Third of U.S. population, same number of people aged above 65. We can imagine the problem uh, and its scale. So uh, they reached out and said, we want to look at uh, mass screening uh, and finding out who is at risk and try to do uh, the characterization of the population. And we're going to deploy this uh, program, uh, which again, first of its kind, that can be deployed in other territories when the drugs are available. You can proactively screen and find the problem at early stage and get the diagnosis and treatment. Okay, so do you have any plans to collaborate with other organizations or healthcare providers? Absolutely, there's, uh, there's many of these ongoing. Uh, as I mentioned, we, we're a small company, but we're active in four continents uh, as we speak, uh, from APAC to Middle East and, uh, and North America. And our uh, approach to this is that this is a, such a powerful technology, uh, but needs to be more accessible. So the way we're looking at this is by building um, our software development kit. You can actually integrate this technology in other platforms and you can do whatever you want to do on top of this, whether it's uh, telehealth uh, assessment or whether it's screening, whether it's monitoring, remote patient monitoring, you can build this within your platform uh, and, uh, and, and, and provide access. Uh, we continue, continue to add to these uh, collaborations and uh, open to, 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 to uh, any sorts of um, ideas that can, again, enhance the capability, but also access. Okay, so Sina, before we let you go here, are there any timelines or milestones that investors in Cognitivity should be watching out for over the near term? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, we have some exciting announcement coming up. Um, again, uh, the, the area uh, that we're talking about uh, mostly is around Alzheimer's treatment. Uh, we're building a huge uh, momentum um, with providers, payers, and um, other um, pharmaceutical companies. So uh, we'll, we'll keep you posted, but uh, we're get, getting very close to some, uh, some huge collaborations. Okay, sounds great. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming on and giving us the update. It's been a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you guys enjoy videos like this, consider giving us a subscribe by hitting that subscribe button below me there before you leave. Bye.